So by now we know that Drake got the Somalian goons and warlords willing to catch a body for him. And one of those dudes being Top 5. Now, Top 5 was recently released from prison where he would claim on his first day out that Drake was the one who paid for his lawyer fees and allowed him to beat this murder case. Now, ever since Top 5 got released, though, Top 5 has been going at everyone who crossed Drake while he was in prison. He went off on Kendrick. He went off on anybody in L.A. who's rocking with Kendrick. He went off on WAC 100 for suggesting that Drake send a cease and desist letter to Kendrick Lamar and the NFL. Yo, WAC 100, yo. Where's that fat rat? Where's WAC 100? Glazed donut. That glazed donut. You niggas can't come to Toronto. Where's well, Drake, my nigga? Come on. Y'all remember when Kendra Lamar says you shouldn't say the N-word? Something's just cringy. It's not even that deep. Now, I don't think that applies to Drake, but that definitely applies to, 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 to the Toronto goons, bro. Yo, even like when you hear them like compile the N-word, yo, use a B. Nigga, my nigga. It's like, oh, oh, oh. It just don't sound right. I don't know. It just don't sound right, man. All right? But because Top 5 has been pretty vocal about how he's going to hunt everybody down who messed with Drake, how he's going to throw a hundred shots, how he just beat a body, you know, how Kendrick Lamar is going to get slapped up and done dirty if he comes to Toronto, a lot of people have been wanting to know, man, is Top 5 official? Is this dude really about that life? Well, I don't know, all right? So we're going to learn about Top 5 history together, all right? Now, apparently Drake and Top 5 met because someone in Top 5's family apparently was like a star basketball player who scored 103 points in one game. Hoop dreams are coming true in Toronto after a high school basketball player hit rare air. Point guard Ahmed Ali led his team to victory this week, becoming just the second Canadian player ever to score more than 100 points in a game. How did you do this? You had 30 points after the first quarter, 48 at, at the half. How did all of this happen? Uh, just a night, like when I went to the change room, Ahmed was the best basketball player in his family, but their entire family was nice at basketball. Even Top 5 was really good at basketball. Now, Top 5 was a little hindered because he was 5'5", five five, but he was still really good at basketball. The name Top 5 doesn't come from Toten 5 Glocks. It actually comes because at some point he was ranked Top 5 in basketball for his particular grade in Toronto. Now, because his brother made national news for dropping 103 points, his brother got on Drake's radar. Drake became really close and really familiar with the family because Drake is a basketball fanatic. Drake started wearing Ahmed's jersey while on tour and started doing a lot of fanboy stuff. If I'm being honest, this is D-Rod and this is fanboy activities. But Drake was really supportive of the family. That's where Top 5 and Drake got acquainted. And when Top 5 started rapping at like 16 years old, Drake posted Top 5's first music video on his Instagram, giving him a much-needed boost that he needed. The Drake co-sign was great. It was amazing. Drake co-signing your rap career as an upcoming artist can never hurt you. However, it wasn't all peachy because Top 5 even though he got the Drake co-sign and he was really moving up the ladders of the Toronto rap scene, but he still wasn't taken seriously. His career met a couple of bumps in the road that primarily came from people just thinking he was goofy, people not taking him seriously, you know, not really believing he was this tough like goon or shooter. They just sort of looked at him as a dweeb and they treated him as such. Even in the moment of being confronted, he's still playing this character of this rugged street dude. But then the character absolutely disappears once the dude come out 
and begin to chase top five. Top five obviously didn't want no smoke and skedaddled out of there. Yo, it's good, B. The fuck out you, B. The group of men who confronted Top Five at the subway recorded the video and posted it online, embarrassing Top Five, ruining his reputation as this super tough street dude who's about the business, and he was pretty much left embarrassed, not knowing what to do. But before he could even think about the next plot, the next scheme to gain back his street reputation, something very tragic took place that made Top 5 realize that he can no longer play with the streets no more. If he's going to be in the streets, he actually had to be a full-fledged goon. And in his 20s, was shot to death last night near Dufferin and Lawrence. For more, let's go live now to CB24's Christina Tenalia. Christina, what's the latest here? Well, the latest is we've learned the identity of the victim from police, Nick. He has been identified as 22-year-old Syed Ali of Toronto. His body over here this morning, sadly, right here on Via Bagnato and Lawrence Avenue West. This whole area littered with shell casings, including this blue car right over, right across the street here. So there may have been a chase. There may have been some kind of altercation between the victim and his attacker or attackers. Police cannot confirm yet. They do say, though, they believe that Mr. Ali and his attacker or attackers exchanged some words. Top Five's elder brother, nicknamed Foolish, was shot and killed in 2017 while he was out trying to buy some snacks. But this murder was really odd, and to this day, it's still unsolved. And it was odd because Foolish wasn't somebody who was involved in drama. He wasn't a gang member or a gangster. Now, his brother was Top Five, and Top Five being an upcoming rapper at the time was somewhat affiliated with the jungle bloods of toronto because you know he needed the street rep and they were in a lot of his videos and so was foolish because that's his brother he was supporting him but foolish wasn't a game member so it was sort of unclear who wanted him dead who would kill him top five unfortunately didn't have the time to worry about who did what and why he had to get his stuff together immediately Top five had a decision to make. Either give up this rap career, this street life, move somewhere else, right, and live a productive life as a hardworking nine to fiver, or I have to really get affiliated. Top five chose to really get affiliated. So Top Five joined the Jungle Bloods officially, and they started another subset within the Jungle Bloods called Go Get 'em Gang, GGG. And Top 5 went from being the cool rapper kid who came around with potential to the rapper homie who was a full-fledged gang member and savage, and he began to divulge in some real violence. Top Five's first taste of real violence came during his beef with another local rapper called Clutch, who was affiliated with the rival gang Falstaff, the 234 Crips. Clutch being a young rapper from the same area as Top 5, wanted all the attention Top 5 was getting. He wanted the Drake shout out. He wanted the attention from the local media. He wanted the fans. And he went about it in a very horrifying way. So, you know, he's kept picking at Top 5, kept cloud chasing him, right, antagonizing him. One of the things that Clutch did to get Top 5's attention and to make the blogs that was really horrifying. So, you know, as we all know, Top 5's brother, Foolish, he died while getting snacks from this, you know, shepherd's market. So, you know, Clutch went ahead and got a shepherd's, like, grocery bag, put it on top of his head, and made fun of the way Foolish got killed. And you guessed it, right on schedule. After Clutch dissed Top Five's brother and how he passed away, Clutch met his demise. After playing some video games with his homies, Clutch went back home. And as soon as he came into his apartment complex and ran up the stairs, 
it looks like a group of men was following him. Approximately three gunmen hopped out, gunned him down in the apartment complex, and ran off. And clutch murder was never solved. It looks like this is the trend, yo. It looks like Toronto police ain't solving no murders, bro. Yo, if the murder ain't a slam dunk, they don't care about it. That's what it would appear. The people killed my son. They don't. They don't have to hide themselves. They has to come up. You know, there has to be a man. The mother of a murdered 16-year-old, Hanad Abdullahi, appeals for the murderer to turn themselves in. Good afternoon, Abdullahi is the second son to be a victim of gun violence. His mother's appeal late last night came. August 1st, 2019. After spending the day playing video games with a friend, Clutch would make his way back to his apartment at 30 Falstaff. As he made his way up the staircase of the building, one vehicle carrying three gunmen would pull up, make their way to the staircase Clutch was walking up, and fired 10 shots at him. The gunman would take off immediately, while it would take nearly 30 minutes for a 911 call to be made. By the time paramedics would arrive, Clutch had already passed. Right around this time, the Persona Top 5, the rapper, was almost unrecognizable from the Hassan Ali kid who was really great at basketball, who was just a kid rapping, goofy, had some dance moves. The Top 5 was now a mafia boss. You see, shortly after Clutch passed away, Top 5 dropped Drill Some More, where, you know, they had some pretty questionable lyrics in Drill Some More. We will soon find out shortly after that video that these weren't just raps, that these dudes were literally murdering people and rapping about it on songs. The guy that was featured on that song called Flipper, well, he was arrested for two first-degree murders four months after that song was released. Yeah, Jackie. Well, 22-year-old Jerome Bell was shot in the junction yesterday afternoon around 3.30, then transported to hospital, but later died in hospital. And I can tell you it has been a very difficult day for the family, still trying to make sense of what has occurred. Here's the bit of good news, though. They have received a lot of support on social media. There has also been a makeshift memorial started on Randolph Avenue. That is the location that Jerome was uh, shot at. Here's a little bit about Jerome. He was one of four siblings. He was also an aspiring rapper. And according to his friends, he went by the nickname Murda. It was very clear that either Top 5 was a very bad guy who had transformed into being a really big bad gangster overnight, or he was surrounded by dudes who were ready to kill for him. So he was emboldened to do whatever he wanted to do in that city. Now, Top 5 being emboldened by dudes around him will be showcased for the world to see during the pandemic, when apparently a comedian by the name of DJ Snoopy you know, was sort of clowning some old videos of Top 5 as a kid dancing in a bra. You know, he was including Top 5 in his comedic bits on IG Live. Top 5 wasn't amused by it. Top 5 was, you know, not cool with it. He was very upset. So Top 5 confronted him on IG Live and told him, hey, bruh, stop it. Snoopy wasn't going to be intimidated. So Top 5 told him, I'm going to get your chain snatch in seven days. Well, you put it on you. Big okay, up man, up, everybody watching this, do you want me to take your chain? Up, up, up. I'll give us seven days to take your chain. I you, promise you, chain. You want a cookie? Seven days. Do it. Do you want to do this? <laughs> seven days. Count everybody. Everybody watching this. Seven days, Snoopy's not going to have his chain. Uh, if you agree with me right now. Uh, uh, do you, you think so we can do it? You want my chain? Do you think we can do it? Do you want to wear my chain? Seven day do challenge. Do Snoopy. Do you want to wear my chain? On my mother's life, I will sit on your chain. You, I'll put it on why? my chain. Why do you want to read it? Yeah, I know if it's sit on one thing. I'll get the group chat right now. Seven days, Snoopy Adiga. chain. His no. chain costs 2500 I'll pay 10 bands for his chain. Go Adiga. get it. Go get his chain. It's over for you. It's uh, over. I'm, I'm back. Buy my attack by life, dog. Pedro activated. Listen, listen. Top 5 was out to make a point. He was out to prove that he was no longer the kid dancing with a bra in those funny videos. 
He was no longer the kid that y'all was chasing out of Subway and running him off his block. You know, he was somebody to be feared. And in approximately seven days, Top 5 made good on his promise. Some, something told me not to wear my chains to the mall today. Luckily, I didn't. Someone went and got my pendant, man. They got my brother's pendant. So whoever has my brother's pendant, I hope my brother haunts you guys for the rest of your life. To add insult to injury, instead of taking a pendant, giving it back and saying, see, bro, I told you not to play with me. Here's the pendant back. No. Top five took things really far. Top five did something really cruel. He took the pendant of DJ Snoopy's dead brother and just, just watch what he did to it, man. This is sad. Okay, we're at 2,000. Uh, oh, let me screenshot. Hold on. Listen. Uh, Somebody's going to screw request. Okay. It flushed! It flushed! We flushed this thing! It's big! It's big! We, we flushed... Yo, Mayu, go to New Jewelry. You should have went to Frankie or Rock City or Kalani. I don't know where you got that fucking shit. Plus that shit. Let's go, yo. Anytime DJ Snoopy's outside, take another chain. You fucking twerp. Top 5 was committing these crimes and posting it all on social media for the police to see. It's as if he was 100% sure they wouldn't do anything. They wasn't going to investigate or lock him up. However, you know, Top 5 reign of terror would come to an end after this next murder. So, you know, a rival rapper by the name of Nine, he dissed Top Five's brother, right? He dissed how he died in the same manner that Clutch dissed him. He got a shepherd's bag and dissed him. Now, 24 hours after the local rapper Nine dissed Top Five's brother, Top Five and his homies went to spin the block. Now, it was unclear if they spun that neighborhood and shot and killed the first person they saw or if this was a case of mistaken identity and they thought they seen somebody associated with Nine. On January 30th, Nine would diss Foolish by posting a picture of a shopper's drug mart shopping bag. Less than 24 hours later, the following would occur. On the evening of January 31st, 20-year-old Hashim Hashi returned home from dinner and was attempting to enter his apartment building's underground parking garage at 40 Falstaff. A vehicle then approached Hashi from behind while a gunman jumped out the front passenger door. He ran towards Hashi's vehicle and shot him multiple times, killing him instantly. The suspect ran back into the vehicle, which was later found roughly 10 kilometers away from the scene of the shooting, burning in Earl Bales Park. Hashim was not involved in any gang activity. He was a second year student studying accounting at Humber College while working part time at Pearson Airport. He had a promising future and he was a very well respected young man. About two weeks after the shooting, Toronto police arrested two people in connection with the killing. 24 year old Emmanuel Missa, aka Money Man GGG, was arrested on February 12th and charged with accessory after the fact to murder and failing to comply with recognizance. The next day, Top 5 was arrested in Windsor and charged with accessory after the fact to murder and failing to comply with probation relating to his driving charges. It's still unclear why they targeted the person who they targeted because he was an accountant student. He was a college student. He had nothing to do with none of the gang violence. They thought he was linked to Nine. They thought he was somebody who was associated with Nine. Now, all Somalians do look alike, so they probably mistaken him for somebody in particular, but it's unfortunate. Now, top five charges was eventually upgraded from accessory to first-degree murder when police discovered that top five was the alleged getaway driver. Now, after top five charges was upgraded, top five cut off his, his ankle monitor you know, that he received when he posted bond and he went to the U.S., right? He came to L.A. on some fraudulent travel documents and left Canada completely. 
Now, he was eventually captured and spent three years in jail fighting this case, and he got out, <laughs> right? You know, the judge threw out the case, you know, because the judge says, you know, that the police department made some mistakes. So now Top 5 is an innocent man fishing for another body, dissing every rapper he can diss. Y'all let me know in the comment section, man, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Top 5 is a gangster? Is he a goon? Or do you feel like Top 5 is still cosplaying a gangster and he's still that little boy who got chased out the subway? Let me know. And if you're still watching, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out why Jay-Z might die in prison if these accusations are true. Click on this video here to find out what those accusations are. I'm going to see you guys in this video. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.